Hi friends, Amanda here. Today's mandatory activity is making this tree picture soap for President Lincoln's Cottage gift shop. Um, now they approached me uh, many months ago. We talked about some options for soaps for the gift shop and um, that they would be based on some of the things at the President Lincoln's Cottage in Washington, D.C. Um, and so I, I, you know, I came up with a couple of designs uh, for them to choose from. And this, I think, was, was my favorite. I think it was their favorite. Um, definitely the most complicated of the soap designs, um, but really just um, a su super fun. Uh, multi-day, multi-step process, and I'm just going to share it with you now. Um, so I'm starting this project with a very small little batch of soap. Um, the entire batch is all you see here in this container, and uh, the reason I'm making such a small batch is because I need to make some soap dough. Um, now this soap is a picture of the Osage orange tree, which is in the, the front of President Lincoln's cottage. Um, it's kind of an iconic tree on their property. And Osage oranges, if you don't know, are green. Um, they smell a little bit like um, orange and a little bit like cucumber, and they're just kind of bright. And uh, that's actually the, the fragrance that I chose for this soap as well, it was a cucumber citrus. Um, so, so the first thing I need to do is make the soap dough so that the next day I can make some embeds and we'll use the embeds to make the Osage oranges throughout the soap and the ones that are put on top. I'm going to make two of them this light green and then I'm going to add some dark green to the mixture because not only do I need Osage oranges, I need leaves. Um, and uh, you know, I'm going to need some darker soap for that. So instead of making two separate batches, I'm just going to take the light green and make it dark green. I'm going to make the dark green poured into the last two molds here, and then we're going to leave these to uh, dry overnight. So the second step that we need to do on day one is to prepare the embed that will end up being um, the, the tree itself, like the, the trunk of the tree. And um, so you can see I still, my, my mixer, um, my stick blender is still covered in green soap. Um, and I'm just gonna go into another baby batch. Um, and this one we're going to make brown. And we're gonna do two shades of brown. And I'm not even gonna bother, you know, cleaning off the stick blender because it's still going from green to brown. And, um, and then once we get those two shades of brown, I'm gonna go ahead and swirl them in, in the pot swirl and then pour them into a mold and let them dry. So in the morning, I should have soap dough that I can use for the bars, and I will have uh, an embed that I can cut up and use for the tree trunk, and sort of carve the tree trunk. Now I didn't bother to fragrance the, um, the first uh, bars that we're gonna use for soap dough, because they're just gonna be tiny little pieces. Um, but since this tree trunk is going to be, you know, a giant portion of the bar, I'm going to go ahead and add some of the fragrance to to this part of the batch. Now this is called Energy from Crafter's Choice, and like I said, it's um, it's a citrus and cucumber kind of blend. It's a very bright, really pretty fragrance um, that ended up holding up really well in cold process. So after the cure, the soap still smelled really, really strong. Now next you're gonna see me add a little bit of coconut milk powder to this soap batter. Um, and I just, it's one of those ingredients I really enjoy. It makes your bars so creamy and helps with the lather. Um, I just find it to be a really n nice additive. Um, it makes the bars, you know, it, they're soft to the touch. Um, and it's just a little bit of extra of, of luxury there. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix in that coconut milk powder and then we're gonna mix in the lye water solution and add in um, our colors since the fragrance is already in there and then we'll get going with pouring our tree. Okay, so you can see here I've mixed my two colors of brown, and now I'm gonna take the dark brown and pour it into the light brown in sort of like four quadrants, sort of kind of a, a north, south, east 
West sort of situation. Um, and, and what this is going to do is um, allow kind of a, a, a marbled effect when we pour the soap out of this one bucket. Um, so I'm just going to get a spatula and scrape out every little last bit of soap from the dark brown container. Um, you know, when you're soap making, the um, <laughs> the best thing you can do for yourself is get as much soap out of your containers as possible because otherwise they're really, really, really hard to clean because <laughs> there's a lot of soap stuck to the bottom. Um, although they do kind of wash themselves having been, you know, filled with soap. But so I'm just scraping out everything that I can here. And then once I have it all in this bowl, I'm going to go ahead and pour it into uh, a sort of a small loaf mold. And we're going to use that uh, tomorrow to cut the shape and, and sort of carve the shape of our tree. Let me give it one quick stir. That's it. That's all I'm doing. I don't want to mix the two colors together. I want to let that process sort of happen naturally when I pour it into the mold. And I just have this tall and skinny mold and I thought that would be sort of the perfect size for a, a, a tree trunk. And there are so many things I like about soap making but but one of them is is moments like this where I just get to watch the soap sort of dribble out of the bowl <laughs> when it's mixing together and marbling like that. Um, now I'm just kind of you know dancing the soap across the top of the bowl to sort of get it or the top of the mold rather to try to get it to make some interesting patterns. Um, but the, you know, the process itself, I'm just I'm enamored with everything about it. Um, but I just, I love this technique, this in the pot swirl technique, uh, because you don't really have to, you know, mix the two colors together and you still end up with some really nice variation once you get to cut into the bars. So that's it for step one and two. We've got some soap dough curing and we've got some tree trunk curing and we'll come back tomorrow and see what we got. All right, so it's the next day. I'm, clearly I've already gotten started to make sure this is gonna work out for me okay. And I'm gonna show you how I make the, the leaves with the soap dough and how we extrude some of these Osage oranges. Um, to get that done, but it, it's really kind of neat. So if I left the soap out to dry, it would just continue to, um, you know, evaporate moisture. The you know the water content uh, dissipates. You typically let cold process soap sit for four to six weeks, but if you don't, the very next day um, you've got something that is pliable that you can really use if you're you know gentle to uh, to make some stuff out of and. Um, you know, you need to have a soap recipe that will, that will, you know, give you this kind of open work time. Um, and, and, but it, you know, it worked out really well. So I'm just kind of smearing it into this leaf mold and, you know, pack it in there and then peel the mold away from the soap. And that's how we make our leaves. So I did this, you know, several dozen times and, um, aiming for, you know, two leaves per, per soap because I'm going to put them on the top um, but it's a it's a neat little little way to kind of get some nice detail into uh, into your soap bars okay now I'm going to show you how I got the little um, sort of ropey bits of soap dough. And this is just a clay extruder. I got it from Amazon. Uh, it comes with a couple of different disc sizes. You can see this one is kind of, um, you know, a smaller, multiple discs like spaghetti. It kind of um, reminds me if you ever used uh, Play-Doh uh, when you were a kid, <laughs> this is kind of how you would make hair for things. Um, so this is obviously is the smallest, but the, the reason I'm making multiple um, different tubes of soap dough is because I want the oranges to be different sizes. I want a variety on the inside of the tree. And the tricky part, at least for me, uh, making a picture soap is trying to think about it as the cross section of the soap. So each of these tubes, when you cut it sideways or halfway, when you cut the bar, is going to be round. And so some of them will be little round, 
uh, Osage oranges and some of them will be larger around Osage oranges. Um, but this process works really well, you know, again, because the soap dough is only sat overnight, so it's nice and pliable. Um, it didn't have any issue getting it through the extruder. Um, you know, getting the soap dough into the extruder was as easy as rolling it into a little sausage. You can actually see that in the bottom right corner, the little leftover sausage bit that didn't, didn't fit in the extruder. Um, but so these I just, you know, I made a ton of. Um, I'll fast forward through the end of it for you. Uh, and I left them to, to firm up so that once we're ready to use them, they're, you know, they're not quite so wiggly. Let's take a look at the second part of the project we made last night. So I've never carved a soap tree before. Let's hope I don't <coughs> completely screw this up. Uh, I have decided I'm going to use the little um, purple lined mold. This is one from Amazon that I feel like everybody starts making soap with this one. Um, but I like it because it's wide enough at the bottom it'll still fit in my soap box. But um, it's also wider, significantly wider than this tall, skinny mold that I um, put the tree trunks in um, overnight. So I think that once I carve away part of the tree and slide it in here, that there'll still be a fair amount of space left for me to fill in with grass and sky and tree bits. Here's my sketch. So originally I was going to go for a tree like right in the center of the bar, um, but I have changed my mind. I'd like to butt it up against the side of the mold so that you get half the tree, some grass, that'll be sky, and then I can start putting those embeds in um, when I pour the leaves. Um, so I'm thinking I'll do an in the pot swirl for the, the sky, a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, and then I'll do an in-the-pot swirl of various greens for the tree. And then on the top, I'll put those um, little embeds of Osage oranges and leaves. So we'll see how it goes. That is the current plan. All right. I just felt like doing it this way up against the side of the mold gives me um, a better grip on positioning this giant tree in the other mold um, rather than having to try to get it to stand up and be sort of curvy on both sides all right here she comes all right just clean up her sides a little bit and take a look at the shape so going up in here I basically think I need like like lining this side up with this side means I really need to only cut away half of this tree so I think I think I can do something like this cut away that so that is what I'm going to try Obviously, I do not need to be too precious about this because it's um, ultimately just sort of not a big deal if it's not the same everywhere because whatever is different will get filled in with bits of tree and bits of sky. Uh, I do need to trim this down though, so let's see where we have a good alignment spot. And that's going to be somewhere around here. 
Now I have some more soap dough. I can make branches. Oh, that's pretty. The in the pot swirl from yesterday from the uh, trunk. That bodes well for my trees. Gonna have that pattern. Awesome. All right, so this should it's still a little big. Getting close. Okay, almost there. I think it's just actually crooked. It's a little thicker at the bottom than the top. Okay, so now we will work at carving away. Just kind of treating this like a giant slab of clay at this point just exactly what it feels like and just smoothing down the side i don't think i really need to but it feels kind of good <laughs> um, just sort of trying to see like what it's going to look like all the way down i think it's a little thicker in the middle here let me take some of that off. Hopefully this is all good looking tree. All right. A lot of scraps here. Um, and this I will, if I can't figure out something I need brown soap dough for, which I currently do not have plans, um, I will rebatch all of this. Oh, it smells so good. I do not want to waste it. It smells amazing. Or I can mold it into little ovals and make felted soaps. That is the other thing I like to do with leftover scraps or soaps that are a little bit ugly. I'm still kind of wondering whether there's a way for me to lay this in. Let's see if I can get you guys to see. So this is the cross section so if this is a cross section of the tree, if I want like a branch, I'd have to kind of come out and go all the way down. Um, you need to be thinner than this, obviously. But I'm curious whether there's an opportunity to put some of this back in there. I might try. Okay, so grab the lye water solution and my oils and we'll mix up some sky and leaves okay I'm a little cramped in here trying to keep you guys on this table where the camera is set up um so i apologize if it's a little erratic but this is the best i can do ah for the moment all right okay have in my bowl a mix of my soaping oils. Uh, this is the recipe from Royalty Soap. So we have 40% olive oil, uh, extra virgin, and 30% coconut oil. Uh, we have 20% responsibly sourced palm oil, 5% uh, castor oil, and 5% sweet almond oil. So it's a really nice blend, very bubbly. To that, I'm going to add some coconut milk powder, which is what I did with the tree. It's not a very big batch, so I'm just going to give it a scoop. It'll make the bar nice and creamy, help with the lather. It's just kind of nice. 
All right, now I'm going to blend this in until the coconut milk powder is nicely incorporated in with the oils, and then we're going to add our lye water solution. This is a lye water solution made with half water and half aloe vera juice. So we're going to have an aloe vera soap. And I want to keep the pour as runny as I can. Um, just so that I have the ability to get in between all of those little crevices, um, at least in the beginning. And uh, so I'm gonna kind of hand mix my lye water in first. whisk in the lye water solution just to try to give me as much working time as possible. This is a very small batch because I'm really just finishing out what's left in the container. This is probably still too much. Um, but um, I want to keep it nice and fluid. I'm going to add in the fragrance oil because I know from yesterday that it behaved really well. All right. So I'm going to start with um, pouring a little bit of grass in the base of the mold. And we're going to use the same jungle green mica that we used for um, the leaves. Give this a little bit of a pulse just to kind of thicken it up a little bit before I pour it in the mold. I need it to be thick enough that I can wedge that tree in on top of it. Light to medium trace. Looks pretty good. You can see the outline of the stick blender. All right, so let's grab our mold and just pour it in some grass. I'm going to save this beaker because I will be mixing up more green. I'm going to need some more of this dark green and some lighter green to do kind of an in the pot swirl for the leaves on the tree. And that is what we will layer these little extruded Osage orange tubes into. All right. <clears throat> so that is just in there like that. Looks pretty good. Very thin layer. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the tree. Just running my finger along the edge. It's a little dented on the corners from where I was flipping it around, upside down, taking a look. I'm going to try to slide it in along the wall here as closely as I can um, so that it will sit and not squish soap up along the side of the mold. see that I will zoom in there. So we got our little grass, a little tree sitting in there pretty well. This gives us a little um, space between the top of the mold uh, and the top of the tree where we can really kind of pile on some foliage. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now it's time to mix up some sky. I'm absolutely in love with this fragrance. I definitely need a bigger bottle. This is the first time I've tried it. It's so yummy. Just so, so fresh. All right. So it's going to be pretty. 
pretty light. And I have this mica, this is Making Waves. Um, it is a mica pigment blend. It's for soap use only. So I always try to kind of check before I use, obviously. Um, usually everything is okay for cold process soap, but um, for bath bombs particularly, half the stuff does not work. Soap batter is pretty yellow from the fragrance oil and from the aloe vera juice, so I might need a little more blue just to help balance it out so my sky doesn't look green. And blues are funny. Blues will turn green on you and then typically back to blue. Um, it's very confusing if you're a new soaper. Um, just like the green kind of did on us yesterday. So this is a pretty nice looking skyish blue. Maybe a little bit more white. Um, but I, frankly, I still have a hard time kind of getting used to how much blues will shift. Um, I have a very, very blue soap in my, um, Raid the Mini Bar soap set. And I swear I thought it was just ruined because the... Um, the blue soap was so, so green I and mean, in an unflattering shade. Okay, so these two combined, I think, will be a nice sky. And let's go ahead and pour some in. So I did kind of a mix here of uh, dropping some of the color into the center and leaving some of the color onto the top, uh, leaving some of the lines of color on top. So I'm just gonna kind of flood it really gently here. Okay, that is a fair amount of sky, I think. Pretty. So I'm going to let that set for a few minutes. I'm just going to take a feel around in here. It's still pretty liquidy. All right. So let's go ahead and mix up some greens. I'm going to go ahead and leave this um, container. It's got a fair amount of white left in it and um, to make a lighter green and then get my dark one back and make some more dark green I'm gonna save a little bit off to the side just in case I'm not really sure what I'm gonna need Probably I will need more dark green, but until I know for sure, I'm going to reserve it in case I'm wrong. Okay, so I'm going to make the light green with this enchant enchantment mica from Nurture Soaps. So I just, I wanted a green that was different than um, the Osage orange green. This is actually pretty close to the Osage orange green, unfortunately. Need to darken maybe a little bit and see. That's pretty close. All right, well, let's mix this. Let me lighten this a little bit so it's not completely the same color as the grass. I also brought over this um, Martini Olive Green. This is one of my favorite greens. I just really like it. I'm gonna mix a little tiny container. Um, just because I feel like it would be fun to have another green in my tree. 
Alright, so my air conditioning system, or my heat just turned on, so if you can't hear me any longer, I'm going to voice over this part. It's pretty though, it's olivey. Now it's gonna shift. All of these greens are gonna change colors probably through the making of the soap. So um, if they get really ugly and weird, they won't stay that way. This is still too light or too um, bright, I think. It's still too close to the Osage orange color. We're in business here. What I'm going to do first, set these aside a little bit, and look at our mold. Let's go back in closer. Um, so the sky itself is still pretty runny. I'm trying to sort of just texture it a little bit because it would be nice for it not to be like a completely flat line. Um, what I am going to do though is take some of these guys while this is nice and loose and stick them in there because I feel like, you know, some of the fruit would be hanging sort of off of the bottom of the tree anyway and it's a good opportunity to do that. So let's break this off to the right size. Hopefully it doesn't sink. Stay there. Very good. I'm actually going to pour a thin layer of this green on top. Very, very thin. Make sure this green doesn't sort of dip into the sky color. Let it sit on top. That looks pretty good actually. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to start to layer in some of these guys and. Um, I'll fast forward through some of this for you. The next thing I'm going to do with the greens, though, is swirl them together into this pot. Um, so as I'm doing the pours, all the greens are kind of melding together. deciding to push this down a little bit because I'm a little concerned that my sky is going to be completely level. <laughs> so I um, thought if I could kind of push the tree down into the sky it would be less noticeable. Can you even see? I don't even know. Let's try that. All right, covering up some tree. Actually, yeah, that's fine. I was going to put some more green in here, but we can do this. Actually, I'm just going to 
score. I should have done this before I poured it in and I wasn't thinking about it, but I'm scoring the top of the tree just to kind of make sure that doesn't look like a solid top either. have the ability to add any of this but I might try anyway let's see Very strange. I really don't know. We're gonna find out together, aren't we? Mm. I mean, my hope is that once there's a cross section, it'll just look like a thin little band of wood. We'll see, there's no going back now. <laughs> All right, it's starting to get a little thick on me, so let's go ahead and scoot this out of the way for a second. We'll loosen this up. Loosen this up. such a mess. All right. Okay, so let's cover that up and throw some more Osage oranges in. that the tree trunk is covered, we can do oranges all along the top too. Over here. This is so much fun. It's like painting with soap. I love it. at the soap um, every few minutes to see how it was setting up because I really wanted it to, to I wanted to dome up the top a little bit and give it some texture so it looks sort of like you know fluffy and leafy um, and it was just taken forever even now it's been 40 minutes <laughs> and it's still just now at the point where like I could pipe it if I wanted to but um, you know, just took a long, 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 long time. But looks like it's going to accept a little bit of texturing, which is excellent. So I'm gonna go ahead and plop on the remainder and do a little zhuzhing. Make it a little leafy and then we'll put our Edmonds on. I'm so excited to see what the inside looks like. I might have trouble sleeping tonight. <laughs> I'm 
my husband and I always joke that I have this habit of taking things just a little bit too far. So I get to the point where I'm done. I'm like, oh, it was perfect 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and I just kept tinkering with it. So I try and I, I mean, and I mean that in like all things, like not just soap, but any project I'm working on. Oh, it's getting close here. All right. The little leaves that we made earlier, and the little Osage oranges. So let's see what we want to do here. Mm. I don't want it to look like holly instead of my concern. Maybe two. Might be very large bars, but that might have to be the case regardless. So I let the soap sit for about 24 hours and now we're going to get in here and pop it out of the wooden mold and then pop it out of the silicone mold and then we'll get out the cutter and see what we got. Not bad. You can see your little branches coming through. It's pretty cute. <laughs> 